Colonel, I was talking about Morning Joe and how they're basically a propaganda arm of the war machine. Do you have any comments on that, on how many of these media networks are basically just taking press releases straight from DOD, from Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and then parroting them and laundering that information as news on TV? Well, I guess they do that. They they also bring in all these retired officers, particularly senior officers, who just repeat what uh, they've been given from the Department of Defense. So it's a it's a universal lie uh, that is designed to maintain the fiction that we're doing something positive, that the Ukrainians can win, and that Russia is evil incarnate. And unfortunately, because of the Cold War, the long experience of conflict with the Soviet Union, people are ready to believe it. But in truth, uh, the picture is very, very different. We're, we're involved in the most corrupt country in the world, possibly, called Ukraine, the Ukrainian population is now down to less than 20 million, which means that 14.5 million have left the country or in many cases being killed. This is a, this is a catastrophe. It's, it's gross mismanagement of resources on our part here at home because uh, our war stocks are way down. Somebody asked me the other day, if we had to fight a major war, could we do it? I said, well, as long as it lasts a week, we could do it. And he said, what do you mean? I said, after a week, all the missiles are gone. All the ammunition is gone. We're in very bad shape right now, and people don't seem to understand that. I mean, I mean, Colonel, I, I don't want to use the word without any basis, but I mean, how is that not high treason to deplete the military stockpile for a foreign adversary? I mean, you could want to help Ukraine. You could be misguided on that. But then to make us so unprepared, yeah, that, that, that's a direct threat to our national security. Well, one would think the simple act of ensuring that our borders are open and undefended, uh, of dismantling the rule of law in our major cities, of appointing people who are turning against the core American population in favor of criminals and foreigners, I, I'd say that qualifies as well. But again, the American people are still three meals away from revolution, as Lenin would say. And I guess that's that's the problem. Uh, at some point, Americans have to demonstrate that they're they're not going to put up with it any longer. Uh, they're not there yet. And now a Raytheon CEO says Ukraine has depleted the weapon stocks. Now, just to play devil's advocate, Colonel, is, there is there is truth that only because I could see them lying about it to get more money from Congress because these people are a bunch of cockroaches. But you're saying this is actually legit, that it's not just. Oh, no, it, it's legitimate. And just to, just keep in mind, he's going to gouge us on price. Of course he will, because you're going to have to accelerate a timeline, you know, triple the price, all that crap. Yeah. And in, and in addition, there are a lot, a lot of this stuff should be replaced by new systems. In other words, it would be a mistake just to replenish all of the old material. I mean, we're, we're 30, 40 years away from really new military equipment in great quantities flowing into the armed forces. We're, we have an armed force that's designed for a kind of warfare that is over. I mean, it's still a major tribute to World War II. Uh, structurally, we need, Radical, radical reform. And remember, we've got 44 four stars on active duty for a force of less than 1.1 million. And during World War II, when we had 12.2 million in uniform, we had seven four stars. Think about that. Unbelievable. I mean, you think about it, the biggest war hawks are getting rich off of this. The worst Ukrainian oligarchs are getting rich off of this. The people who pay the price are ordinary Americans who have to watch the constant stream of flow and capital, money and attention to a border that you can't recognize while we're being overrun for 5,000 people a day. Where is all the money gone? Where is the money? Billions and billions and billions of dollars spent on Ukraine. Our border remains wide open. 10,000 illegals are coming across the border every day. It might be 15,000. We don't know. It's just a guesstimate. But our regime and many of your Republican leaders are just sending more and more and more and more and more money to Ukraine. But where has the money gone? Well, Jordan Schachtel joins us. He is the author of the Dossier Substack, and he's asking that question and doing the research. Jordan, welcome back to the program. Jordan, where is the money? Hey, Charlie. Thanks for having me. That's it. That's the million or that's not really the million dollar question. That's the hundred and fifty billion plus dollar question mm -hmm. is where's the money going? Where's the oversight? Why is Ukraine losing when we're giving them all this money? I mean, I don't know if you re if you saw the news just this weekend. 
in uh, Bakhmut, uh, uh, the Wagner group, which is a Pino Battalion mercenary group, defeated Ukraine's organized army and captured a key city. And I'm just kind of wondering, like, what exactly is going on here? Why, if, if we're committed to the defense of Ukraine and we're we're sending all this billions of dollars, like, why isn't Ukraine winning? And then it gets me thinking, like. What exactly is the goal here? If it's not for Ukraine to win, what exactly is the goal? Okay, so then let's talk about this $3 billion accounting error. What's the story behind that? Yeah, so when they passed, when they continue to pass all of these bills for Ukraine funding, they claim that there's all kinds of oversight mechanisms and, you know, regulatory standards. But then we find out that there was some type of, like, $3 $3 billion accounting error. And my suspicion based on, you know, years of reporting on these wars is that they just kind of like decide to fudge the numbers from time to time, depending on where the political winds are moving. And if Ukraine needs a few more billion dollars, what they can do is basically uh, increase the value or devalue some of the ammunition or missile batteries that they sent and it's basically just become a giant accounting gimmick, and there's really just zero accountability whatsoever. So, so if you were to guess where the money is, I mean, do you think it's being laundered? Do you think that it's going to? I mean, wh- where where is this money going? Is it all actually being spent on the war? Is there an inventory of missiles, bullets, rifles, logistical support? I mean, or is just kind of we're not even allowed to ask questions? So, yeah, this is this is where you <laughs> enter into difficult territory because. The defense industry is getting very wealthy off of this war. And certainly, you know, these purchase orders are very real. When you're sending, um, when you're dismantling the U.S. military and sending our weapons to Ukraine, um, first of all, they write up these paper receipts. So there's nothing really logged into an electronic system that can be verified and transparent. But when you're uh, dismantling our own military, that's great news for the defense industry in Washington, D.C., because that means new purchase orders. The problem, of course, is that it threatens our homeland security because, as you know, Charlie, there's a massive chip shortage that still hasn't been resolved worldwide. We have China that is continually threatening Taiwan, which is an essential chip maker for the world. So when we're sending Patriot missile batteries, while... The, our government will write a check for the defense industry, so that's all well and good. But we're also leaving our own military in a vulnerable position while we may have to wait years to resupply our own army. Yeah, and they're, they're slowly squeezing Taiwan. It's the Python strategy. It's the buried lead that most of our leaders are not focused on at all. It's just a matter of time before they take it there. Okay, I want to play a piece of tape here. Um, let's go to cut 29. Zelensky confirms the loss of Bakhmut to Russia. But hey, at least you guys, as American taxpayers, can say you gave it a good old try. Play cut 29. Because it's left these Bakhmut still in Ukraine's hands, the Russians say they've taken Bakhmut. I think no. But you have to, to understand that there is nothing. They destroyed everything. There are no buildings. It's a pity. It's tragedy, but... For, for today, Bakhmut is only in our hearts. So, so Jordan, what does success look like exactly then for the American regime in this war? Yeah, it, it, very sadly, the, the strategy seems to be to kill as many Russian soldiers as possible and use the Ukrainian civilians who are being drafted into the military to do so like the strategy is literally fighting down to the last ukrainian and if you're a ukrainian you know living your life in kiev um you have to really think about like who exactly is your friend here we know that the russians aren't exactly you know motivated to support uh the interests of western ukraine especially but you know the, the nato u.s aligned biden administration also has plans for Ukraine, and those plans involve basically using their Ukrainian military as the the tip of the spear in their kind of like xenophobic operation against Russians in general because they view Russians 
as as a threat instead of trying to make peace between these two countries. Unfortunately, the Biden administration is acting as a very bad actor, as you've seen through the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline. I mean, they're willing just to just to make life more difficult for Russians in general. They're willing to also harm basically the entirety of the European continent. And I, I think that you know, when we're engaged in these overseas skirmishes between, uh, you know, these incredibly powerful forces, uh, I think, you know, President Trump w- was right when he said that peace is the prize. You know, you can't forget about the human suffering here and you can't just, you know, label people according to, um, you know, whatever your geopolitical philosophy is and kind of forget about the human element here. There's thousands of people dying every day and, and it's, it's for the better, for the betterment of humanity for, uh, you know, society, the world economy. I mean, nothing good can come out of the continuation of this war other than the flourishing of Washington and Wall Street. Yeah, I mean, look, Russians are humans, too. And no one's allowed to say that out loud. But I, I don't delight in the killing of Russians. I, I had somebody once at an event. They said, Charlie, I watch videos of Russians being bombed and I enjoy that. I said, That's, I don't I don't feel that way at all, at all. I'm not pro-Russian. I just don't get off on seeing Russians being massacred. I think that it's just there's something wrong with you, I think, if that's that's the case. I mean, Russia should be neutral towards the United States as we go after the true enemy, the Chinese Communist Party. It's completely unnecessary war. War is the worst thing that that we as humans engage in. So in closing, Jordan, what is the total number we've sent to Ukraine? Do we know? Is it 115, 130? 200 billion. What is the actual? Do we have any idea what the actual number is? Based on my reporting on the war, I would put the number at around 150 billion plus whatever they value the supplies at. You know, the Europeans, they say that uh, Putin is akin to Hitler marching through Europe. The Europeans don't seem to think so because they're not really giving them any money. Um, so it's very interesting to hear all of these. Uh, World War II analogies coming from the Europeans especially. But yet, you know, the U.S. taxpayers being hit hard here, especially in a, in a very difficult economic environment. We just need to get out of this, you know, the, the overseas empire business. I agree with you entirely. We need to start treating people as human beings and we need to just start focusing on our own sovereignty, defending our own sovereignty, you know, building the freaking wall on the southern border. Like, why are we spending $150 billion on Ukraine? 5,000 miles away, this conflict is taking place. Like, enough of the empire stuff. I like to just see our country get back to using the military to defend our physical sovereignty and leave it at that. The GAE, the Great American Empire, or you could call it the gay that is trying to take over the world while our own domestic homeland collapses. Our country is falling apart. Our kids are committing suicide at record rates. There are 10 to 15,000 illegals that are trespassing into our nation a day. Opioid deaths. The economy is on the jitters. The dollar is about to lose world reserve currency status, which is tied to the stupid proxy war in Ukraine. And we're told that we just have got to spend more money. Got to spend more money. On what? On an ideological crusade against a border dispute to go make Raytheon's board of directors happy? To go make uniparty politicians that don't want to address real issues more popular? It's a disgrace. And I'm... It's time for Americans in both political parties to say enough. End the war.